what does it mean to be made in the image of God? I have, I was talking to a, a Trinitarian um, brother and he said, well, it means, you know, uh, fingers and toes and things. And so I asked him, I said, uh, well, why did in John one, he says, God wrapped himself in flesh, you know, and um, the Bible says that God is a spirit, right? So if we're made in the image of God and God isn't sitting up there looking like this because he's a spirit, what does that mean? And if we look at how we're actually made, I have a soul, I have a spirit and I have a fleshly body, but I am one person. My soul is not over here. My spirit is not over here. I'm made in the image of God and all three are one. And when I die, my soul can leave my body the same way that the Holy Spirit can uh, come out from God, right? And we be filled with the Holy Spirit. So now, Sam, what say yeah, you? John, I'm almost thinking that this is like a setup. We paid him to make it so we <laughs> could refute modalism. And for the record, I want everyone, we haven't paid him. Oh, wait, before you go there, uh, for people that don't understand what modalism is, can you just explain to them modalism? Yeah, well, see, that's what there's a variety of right. flavors in modalism. But modalism basically means there's one divine person who will manifest in different modes in different ways. And he gave the example. For example, John is a father. John is a brother. He's a son. He's a husband. But he's still one person. So the father is the father and can take on the mode of the son and then take on the mode of the Holy Spirit. It's manifestations, roles, modes of one person, not three different persons and separately united in one essence, right? Yep, there we go. Okay, now back to it if now, you can respond. The reason why I'm saying this, it's almost like, Someone paid Marcus to say, hey, make it easy for them to prove the Trinity by asking the right questions to demolish modalism. Genesis 1, 26, 27, folks, and I want you to pay attention. This is a nightmare for modalism because it proves the opposite. It proves that God is not a singular person because I want to unpack this. Now, let me show you why I say this. I, and I was shocked when he mentioned it. I said, no, this can't be real. This has got to be. This is like God, you know, anyway. and God said, let us make Adam in our image after our likeness and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the birds of the heavens and over the livestock and over all the earth and over every creeping thing that creeps on the earth. Now, before I move on, pay attention to two things. This is the first time in the narrative, folks, that God switches the way he creates, switches the way he speaks and in bringing creation into being. Up until that point, God kept saying, let there be light. There was light. Let there be this. There was that. All of a sudden, when he comes to create mankind, he changes his language and he speaks in the plural. Let us make man in our image after our likeness. And here's where people don't catch it, where they read it too quickly to see the import of this passage, why it's a Trinitarian blessing, a blessing from heaven, laying the foundation for the Trinity, but an anti-Trinitarian nightmare. Let them have dominion over the fish, them. So notice, God says, we are going to create Adam, and Adam is a them. Adam is them that rule creation, not a him. He's not one person. So contrary to what he said, the Adam that God created in his likeness is more than one person that possesses a common essence. And this is confirmed in verse 27. So God created man in his own image, in the image of God, he created him. Male and female, he created them. Oh, wow. Adam is a them. Adam is a him and a them, and he's male and female. So the one Adam, the one him, is male and female, and together they are them. So in this passage, God illustrates the plurality within unity of the Godhead by saying, I'm going to create Adam as a finite temporal reflection of my being. Adam, though one, is more than one person, male and female. Together, they will rule physical creation, and the two are linked by a common essence, and they're in fellowship with one another. So now notice the irony. The creation of Adam, consisting of more than one person, male and female, sharing a common essence, that are in fellowship with one another, is supposed to be a reflection of God. So God, like Adam, but on an infinitely higher level, is a community of more than one person that possess a common essence. And these persons are in fellowship with one another, which is why God says, let us make man in our image and our likeness. So this very example proves the opposite point. The one Adam is male and female, more than one person, sharing a common essence in fellowship. 
as a reflection that the one God is more than one person that possess a common essence, and they too are in fellowship with one another. How does this prove modalism? Good. Yeah, no idea. Good points. Really good. Thank you, Sam, for that excellent refutation on modalism. For more clips like this, go ahead and like and subscribe to the channel. Link for the full videos in the description box below. Also, the link is in the description box for Sam's channel. Go on over there and support. And also, we don't have any sales on the merch. So go on over to the merch store. Buy a couple t-shirts. All proceeds go to Sam's ministry. So if you want to support that, go on over and do that. Thank you so much. We're almost at 300 subscribers. All praise, honor, and glory to the one true triune God. Amen.